Welcome back, folks. So we had the uh, Dow Industrials finish up 19. NASDAQ was up two. S&Ps are up by three and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Bob Archer uh, from Great Panther Silver. Uh, you've heard him many times right here at TFNN, folks. Uh, Bob was the co-founder of Great Panther, uh, CEO of Great Panther. Now Bob is a director and always has been a director, of course, of uh, Great Panther Silver, Great Panther Trades. Um, uh, in the uh, U.S. as GPL, uh, bottom line, the low uh, for the year out here is the dollar ten. The high is two twenty eight. Bob Archer, welcome back to TFNN. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great to be back. It's great. To, it's great to have you. So, uh, let, let, can we just talk? You know, you've you've had quite a career. Uh, so you you found Great Panther, then you've been cranking it out forever as the CEO, right? Right. And I know the last time that, you know, we had you on, you know, you, you, you have a new mind and you just felt that uh, at this time you wanted to be, you know, basically have someone else come in there and kick up the next level, right? Yeah, more or less. It, uh, you know, my uh, stepping aside at this particular time is really a strategic decision that uh, I made with the board. And, um, you know, I mean, since starting the company in 2004, we've, we've really grown it organically through uh, yes. the main operations in Mexico. So, uh, you know, we've, we've taken everything to capacity, and, and this next uh, phase of, of our growth is, is going to be through acquisition. And the one that we have in Peru now uh, was the first step uh, in that, uh, that new growth uh, uh, curve and and we just felt that you know rather than me continuing on for a few more years and then handing it off sort of midstream to to someone else uh, we just thought if we could bring someone else in now um, uh, they would have more of an ownership in uh, in this new acquisitive uh, strategy or acquisitive phase of our strategy uh, going forward so well that's so cool the timing thing as anything else it's huge and I can tell you folks so picture I, I tell you Bob and folks I was in not in shock but I'm, I'm getting hold of Bob, right? And Bob's still traveling, doing business. I'm saying to myself, oh, my God, I thought you were going to take a break. But I get it now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing, right? So, yeah, I, it, it, was, it was really cool. It really was. So, hey, tell, tell, us, tell us about this new mine. Well, yeah, it's it's an exciting uh, opportunity for us. Uh, you know, first off, uh, it was it was a terrific um, acquisition uh, from a strategic and cost standpoint because uh, the the previous owner, Nearstar, was getting out of the mining business, and uh, they're really a motivated seller, and that allowed us to come in with with very good terms. Uh, so essentially, we only had to pay a hundred thousand uh, dollars up front, uh, and then uh, essentially we just uh, try to bring the mine back into production. It's on camera maintenance right now and so uh, a couple of years of uh, engineering studies environmental uh, that sort of thing and um, uh, build up the resource and uh, once uh, assuming all goes well and, and we're able to, to bring it back into production we um, uh, we have to recover all of our costs uh, and uh, the mine needs to be profitable uh, before uh, Nearstar gets another dime uh, and uh, you know we can pay them 15 percent of cash flow for a five-year period up to a maximum of ten million dollars so uh, you know it's really uh, it protects us uh, uh, you know up front because we're not filling their pockets uh, yes. while we're spending all the money on the ground um, and uh, you know if metal prices do take a nosedive and we have to shelve the project then and, you know, we um, we haven't lost a ton of money, so sure. uh, so it was a good uh, uh, you know good good deal, a good structure, and uh, the project itself, as I say, it's on care maintenance, 600 ton per day plant, um, a good solid uh, resource. It's a high grade operation, just 90 kilometers east of Lima, uh, great infrastructure, and uh, uh, you know we're we're optimistic at this point that uh, we'll be able to bring it back into production, and at full capacity, it would represent about a 75 percent increase in our production so very very meaningful uh from that standpoint so we're pretty excited about it and the you know uh, you know bob was also in mexico folks and he has a great infrastructure in mexico and in mexico you know he basically is right in the city so it, peru peru is also uh you know basically a great place that's very um not only capable there's a lot of um, people that understand the mining business, so the, the help aspect there should be pretty good, right? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, and we're well within uh, you know, a well-established mining district. So we have a lot of support from the local communities, which in Peru is critical. Uh, that's yes. where most of the problems arise there. Um, but uh, you know, there is a lot of support locally. And um, uh, as you say, a great, great labor pool. Uh, mining represents a, a very large part of their GDP uh, in Peru. It's a very strong economy. Um, uh, and with the new government, uh, you know, politics are, are pretty stable and support. So, um, and it's just the uh, next largest uh, silver producer in the Americas after Mexico. So, wow. you know, we're, we're focused on uh, two great countries, and uh, if we can replicate in Peru what we did in Mexico, then uh, uh, we'll be off to a great start there. And the the price of silver. So right now we're out at sixteen sixty one. Is is that a price that you know is well, there's no, it, I know we all want better prices, but inside the, the silver mining business, is that a price that's good for you, you miners? Well, it's uh, it, it, we can still make a profit at that uh, price. So, you know, as you say, obviously everybody would like higher prices. Sure, right. But um, <clears throat> you know, uh, our uh, normal, what I'll call normal, long-term sustaining costs are probably in the eleven to twelve dollar an ounce range. Okay. Um, and uh, so at sixteen, you know, the company's still healthy. We're still making money. Uh, but, you know, the costs have been a little bit higher this year. Because because we invested in a capital project at our smaller mine in Mexico at Topia that um, on top of that yeah and you know it's interesting because the the dollar hasn't been able to bounce since april 3rd you know it had a little bounce in the last couple of weeks so it's going to be intriguing mm -hmm. i mean it almost looks like the dollar index wants to go to 88 it's like okay well you know it's been a lot lower than that but you know, when you look over the course of years um uh bottom line is that it still looks like it's weak which of course um and the amount of money you know it's amazing bob think about i guess all of us have been thinking about this about the amount of money that has actually been printed uh, and inflation seems like it still hasn't caught on, but yet for the stuff that we do need, inflation's out in this in this marketplace. No, that's right. Uh, it just seems that the, the other shoe hasn't dropped yet. Uh, everybody's just, yeah. just waiting for it to happen, and uh, you know, I'm not sure what the catalyst is going to be or when it's uh, when it's going to happen, but it is going to come, and uh, that should be great for precious metals. And and just having a solid investment, you know, when we get calls in here, it's like okay, a solid investment, you know, that. It's actually in your hand versus we know that when things go high and it's paper, bottom line, it comes down just as quick. It's pretty amazing, actually. You know. Yeah, no, it's certainly uh, timing's everything is from an investment standpoint. Yeah. Well, listen, congratulations. Um, you know, <laughs> I thought you were going to retire, and that's what, folks. He's not retiring. He's still working. <laughs> that, I'll that's, tell you. It's pretty hard. It, it, it is. is. And it, it, I'm going to stay involved. It, well, it totally <laughs> makes sense, too. It totally makes sense. <laughs> Bob, you have a great one. Have a safe one. We look forward to having you back, okay? Thanks, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. That was Bob Archer, folks. He was a co-founder of uh, Great Panther. Of course, was the CEO for years. Now he's the director. GPL, folks, on the NYSE. We're coming right back.